Samsung's laptop game is getting good. After showing us it can deliver on the basics while flexing its display and design muscle, the company is continuing its strategy of focusing on its strengths. The Galaxy Book Pro series features the AMOLED panels that Samsung is known for on its phones, plus a super thin and light design with a long-lasting battery. The Galaxy Book Pro is available in clamshell and convertible variants and comes in 13 and 15 inch sizes. I've been spending some time with the 15 inch Book Pro 360, the convertible. And while most of what Samsung offers is good, in some ways the company has backslid with its latest laptop. I was impressed by how light the 15-inch Galaxy Book Pro was when I first picked it up at Samsung's hands-on event. My review unit is slightly heavier since it is a convertible version, not a clamshell, but at 1.39 kilograms, which is 3.06 pounds, and 11.9 millimeters, or 0.46 inches, it is thinner and lighter than the 15-inch Surface Laptop 4, the Dell XPS 15, and HP's Spectre X360 15T. Numbers and dimensions aside, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 actually looks sort of plain. It's kind of MacBookish with a rounded rectangular shape and a slightly tapering base. HP is the only laptop maker that's producing really eye-catching devices these days, so I can't fault Samsung for something that Microsoft and Dell also fail at. My unit is what Samsung calls Mystic Bronze, and it's similar to the copperish hue on the company's flagship Galaxy phones. You can also get the Book Pro 360 in blue, while the clamshell models are available in blue, silver, or gold. For most people, a traditional laptop will be enough, but those who want to work on the screen without a keyboard in the way will appreciate the Book Pro's 360-degree hinge. It's sturdy enough to prop the Book Pro up in tent mode and hold the screen's position without wobbling too much in laptop mode. Despite its thin profile, the Book Pro 360 offers a decent array of ports. There are three USB-C sockets, one of which supports Thunderbolt 4, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. A full-size USB-A connection would be nice, but I can live without it. Older Samsung laptops' power buttons sat alongside the ports on the edges, but the company thankfully moved the Book Pro's switch to the top right of the keyboard. Hallelujah! I'll no longer accidentally put the machine to sleep when I connect a dongle. The power button also houses a fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello logins. One of the highlights of the new Book Pro series is that they feature Samsung's AMOLED panels, which promise better contrast and more precise colors. The larger Book Pro 360 uses a 15.6-inch Super AMOLED touch panel with a Full HD resolution, and it definitely had deeper blacks, better contrast, and more accurate colors than the Galaxy Book Flex's QLED screen. But I only noticed the difference when I placed them side by side. Samsung also offers a selection of color profiles for the display, like vivid, natural, photo editing, and movie. These will switch the screen to the AMOLED native, sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color spectrums, respectively. You can also set this to auto mode, which will let the Book Pro decide what profile to switch to based on what you're doing. This is pretty much the same as what's already available in the Galaxy Book Flex. And on both machines, I never noticed the auto switching making much of a difference. You're probably better off manually switching the color profile yourself to what you need in the moment. I don't generally use 15 inch laptops, so the extra screen space felt generous. I liked being able to snap two windows side by side and still easily read the fine print on an FAQ page while furiously slacking my coworkers. At 16 by 9, the Book Pro's aspect ratio is a little short for a modern laptop. Most companies like Dell, Microsoft, and HP have transitioned to either 3 by 2 or 16 by 10, and Samsung should follow suit. I love a taller screen, so I can check more messages in my inbox to mark as read without having to scroll, but it's not a deal breaker. Things that also feel extra roomy on a 15-inch machine are the keyboard and trackpad. I had to adapt to the new layout because my fingers are so used to a slightly more cramped setup on my 13-inch Ultra Portable, but once I got familiar with where everything was, typing on the Book Pro was a breeze. There's not much more travel here than on the Galaxy Book Flex, that's my daily driver, nor are the keys as cushy or as deep as the Surface laptops. 
but for a machine this thin, the Book Pro offers a decent typing experience. The numpad on the right is handy for those who enter numbers a lot, and when numlock is off, it doubles as an extra arrow d-pad with the actual home, end, page down, and page up keys. No need to hit FN. Below the keyboard sits the Book Pro's absolute mammoth of a trackpad. Samsung went ham here. It's basically the size of my hand. You'll never run out of scrolling room or space to pinch and zoom. And my fingers almost got tired traversing the expanse. On basics like display, keyboard, and trackpad, Samsung has done a respectable job. But it's on the bells and whistles that Samsung needs to deliver to differentiate itself from established laptop makers like Dell, HP, Asus, and Lenovo. One of the things Samsung has done is include an S Pen in the box with the Book Pro 360, which is handy for digitally signing the piles of non-disclosure agreements I get every week. I wish there was a slot to house the stylus like the BookFlex offers, but at least this S Pen attaches to the Book Pro 360 magnetically. Like many of its competitors, Samsung offers software to protect your privacy and boost your system's performance by adapting to your needs. That latter one is hard to gauge because it works in the background to optimize CPU and thermals based on what I'm doing. It's also not wildly different from what Windows already offers in its power management settings. Samsung's suite of privacy tools include a password-protected folder for sensitive content, a secret screen to prevent onlookers from snooping on your work, and a block recording shortcut that kills your microphone and webcam. I didn't use the first two very much since I don't share this laptop and I haven't been working on confidential stuff outside, but I leave block recording on almost all day and can quickly turn it off when I need to hop on a call with my team. There's also a setting that will use the webcam to take a photo of anyone that entered an incorrect password and send it to you. That's nice, though not a first. I got a kick out of the pictures of myself attempting to crack my own password, but the image quality was honestly pretty trash. That's my biggest complaint about the Galaxy Book Pro 360. Its 720p webcam is downright awful. I don't know if it's purely the hardware, but I suspect it's something to do with the weird software filters that Samsung has built in here. It's like early Galaxy flagships all over again. Selfie cameras that come with aggressive face editing options. This software appears whenever you use the webcam, whether it's on a Google Meet call or the Windows camera app. A row of options appears at the bottom of the screen whenever the camera is launched, and you can choose from profiles like natural, clean, and beautiful. The beautiful filter enlarges your eyes, for example, and I hope I don't need to tell you just how problematic this is. Just like it did on smartphones before, this tool also lets you adjust your eye size, remove blemishes, add makeup, and check boxes for things like slim chin, nice smile, and cute nose. Looks like Samsung still hasn't learned its lesson. You can also choose off to not apply any of the filters, but then you're still left with a weirdly distorted image. It's also hideously low res and dark. If you can get past the bad webcam, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 is a very capable machine. With its 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM, the laptop never hiccuped during my testing. It blazed past the similarly equipped ThinkPad X1 Nano and the AMD powered Surface Laptop 4 on most benchmarks. Depending on how you use the Book Pro 360, Samsung said it can last up to 16 hours or 20 hours of pure video playback. It fell short of that estimate on our video looping battery test, conking out after 15 hours and 20 minutes. But that's still a respectable runtime and is about the same as the 15 inch Surface Laptop 4. It also outlasted the Dell XPS 15 and mainstream ultra portables like the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. With its new 65 watt fast charger, Samsung promises the Book Pro 360 can get to eight hours of juice in 30 minutes. That is pretty clearly not the case though. After I completely drained the battery, I plugged it in, left it there for 45 minutes. When I picked it back up, it said the battery was up to 38%. But after just an hour and a half later, I got a low battery warning. While the recharge speed was indeed fast, I doubt you can actually squeeze a full workday's worth of power after just 30 minutes of charging. 
With a sumptuous display, impressively thin and light design, and respectable battery life, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 once again shows that Samsung is capable of producing a great laptop. The company has also done well here by including the useful S Pen and providing a roomy keyboard and trackpad. I don't even mind the privacy-minded software features, but with a bad webcam and atrocious face editing software, Samsung needs to remember that sometimes less is more. The Book Pro 360 is a great 15-inch laptop if you don't need a good webcam. And in a world where we've grown incredibly reliant on video meetings, it's hard to imagine that there are many people who can live with that. For more reviews on other laptops you should consider, smartphones, wearables, and everything in the world of consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>